I'm Lorraine Sommerfeld and this is the Lemonade Car Show. Today we're talking about tips for purchasing used vehicles and also our resident mechanic will answer any car related questions you might have in our Ask a Mechanic segment. Lemonade is brought to you by OMVIC, that's Ontario's vehicle sales regulator and we're produced by the Automobile Protection Association. The APA fights for you, the consumer, and provides information and news on all parts of the industry. Visit our website at apa.ca or reach us by phone at 416-204-1444. Joining me today is John Raymond. He's an industry consultant and APA advisor, and John Walachek, he's with Autolinks. We'll be taking your calls this evening, 888-764-3778. Welcome to the show. Nice it's to be here. Nice to have you back for the season. Yeah, it's great to be back. Used cars, fun, fun, fun. Yes, yes they are. Now, before the phones go crazy and everyone wants to know how much their used car is worth because everybody owns a used car. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they don't want Let's do some housekeeping first about some of the layers of consumer protection that are there for people purchasing used cars. Maybe we can start with you, John. You can yeah, this is actually one of my favorite shows, used cars. There's so much to learn, and anyone that calls in will definitely have their answers, uh, their questions answered, I should say. But um, people always ask me, and I call the APA, and they say, should I sell the car privately? How do I go about that? Um, if I trade it into the dealer, I may not necessarily get what I want. How much is my car worth? So, um, start to untangle it. Yeah, All good start questions. to untangle these these yeah. questions. It's how far and how deep you want to get into the topic. Um, and it's a good idea to take a, a simple piece of paper and a pencil, or a pen, and write it down. You'll figure out: is it worth the hassle? Is it worth the extra money you may or may not get? And there's one thing that's for sure, there are no guarantees. You can do as much homework as you want on the vehicle, but you're going to have to establish whether you want to go through that or not. Buying or selling? Absolutely. Okay. It's, it's not an easy topic, but it's actually not that hard. If you follow the certain steps on them, it's quite easy actually. So that's where we at the APA say, tell us and discuss amongst your family what your intentions are. Are you just selling the car? Are you going to actually buy another car? If you are going to buy another car, sometimes it's better to trade it into a dealership because you're going to get your tax savings on that. Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to certify it. You don't have to e-test it. You should always clean it if you're going to trade in a car. Please spend the time and have it vacuum cleaned and detailed. So that's money that's well spent. Uh, if you're also going to trade it in, it's actually a good idea to have an e-test. Believe it or not, it doesn't cost a lot of money if it'll pass. Mm -hmm. And it gives you a little bit of bargaining power too when you're trading the vehicle in. E-tests are valid for a year, so sometimes if you yes. go in your files, you might have one that's six months old whenever your birthday was, so you don't even have to go and get a new Absolutely. one. Absolutely. See? And it takes two seconds to check that online. It's yeah. very easy. So yeah. well, let's roll back the tape and all of a sudden I want a new, I want a new used car or a new car. Yeah. I have this car. So how do I determine what my car is worth? Other than calling you, uh, which is <laughs> or always you. a good go or me. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, a good thing is to do a little bit of research and homework. Go on the Auto Trader, go on Kijiji, find something that's similar to what you've got. So uh, mileage, age, and that sort of thing. And that'll give you just sort of a rough idea. Okay, now you have to figure it. Am I going to certify it and e-test it? Look at all the numbers. You're not going to get your 13% like you mentioned on trade-in. Uh, you've got a little bit more hassle and again there's no guarantees and then we always tell our members or people that call in the APA be honest evaluate your own car okay of course your car is great but that's like but tickling if, yourself nobody can do that that's yeah, right but, that's but has your car had an accident if it's had an accident it's worth less if you eat your lunch every day or your breakfast in the car and yes. it looks Off like a dump, yeah. it's worth less. <laughs> it's if worth you less. have a check engine light on or your yeah. brakes are squealing, it's worth less. So really know your car. And if you are going to sell it privately or you're going to sell it to um, a dealer, whether new or used, um, make sure that that car that you want to dispose of looks as good as it can be. You know what happens yeah. sometimes? People do that. They spruce it all up and then they go, oh, this car's all right. Yeah, it's it's not very good. often. But no, sometimes. Very often. sometimes you do get a second one. A good wind. detailing job on a car. If yeah. you've got a car you're just tired of, 
It's, it's like if your husband goes off and gets all remade you know, and comes back to you all spiffed up. Well, when I see that with customers. They've got a car and I go, they don't drive very much. It's got really good mileage on it. And I go, what do you need a new car for? And they're maybe a little bit older, yeah. you know, the people, I mean. And why wouldn't you spend the car time? Take it to your mechanic, have a once-over and a detail. And, and make a good mechanic, too, really. And I've got two Class A's in my family. A good mechanic will tell you when to trade your car in, too. Yeah. They'll stop taking the money from you, and they'll say, listen, put the money towards a new vehicle. But not some a repair. people get tired of their old two That TVs. happens, too. We all do. And you might want to treat yourself. The other thing I've um, watched that's been changing, especially with older buyers, is they do have a car that, for all intents, in perfect shape. But a lot of the new safety features are really good as you get older for lane departure. Like it's helping some seniors that maybe yeah. have some mobility issues. So a lot of times upping the safety in the newer vehicles is, is a good, it's very good, it's very important good thing too. to do. So like even though your car is... Like yeah, that. blind spot. Like yeah, all that yeah. stuff put into it, it for can sure. All help it. Plus, the, the, your old car might be a little bit lower. Yeah. The knees or hips, you know, yeah. you want a lateral movement instead of, you know, plumping down to something or climbing into something. Also, you should have your service record. So if you've just put some serious money into the car or you've been doing your regular maintenance, when you go to sell the car privately or through a dealer, if you bring the last six months or year of invoices, you actually are telling that individual, I put money in this car so you may not have to. And that's why my car is worth more than the other one that you may see online or in the paper. Or Be proud of it. Else. Show it off that you might have done the T belt and the water pump. I you think know, you regular keep service. everything. For sure. I, have, I tell people get a file folder or an envelope, just put everything car related in it for that car. Yes. Sort it out later. But I've sold cars with a complete file with them. People are like, I can, from its first breath. Like oh, I, I get them, it looks like five files of what yeah. I'm selling. It's all rolled into one, but yeah. you're right. It's a good idea. It helps. So yeah. I guess the, the takeaway here is whatever you see the car listed online mm. is not what the car is selling for. So if you see a car for 10000 believe me, it's not being bought for 10000 or very. Well, you're going to see a range of prices. Us. You can throw out the crappiest. Yeah. You can throw out the high end. And everyone thinks they're an, ex they're an excellent driver. They all think their car is in excellent shape. But think about the reasons you're getting rid of that car. Well, the brakes are about Yeah, you know, like you said, John, be honest with yourself and give it a good once-over and be. But, yeah, usually somewhere in the middle is, is usually a safe area. And also, I think John could tell you, the least expensive car that's listed online has a story longer than war and peace. Yes. Okay, it's a thick story because there's a reason why that car is an anomaly in price less than everything else in the market. There's too many people out there that you can't really steal a car like that anymore. There's too many people that have either gone online and the Kijiji or Auto Trader or their friend, their neighbor and such and such. It's not really that that difficult to pull well, a number in to the it. information age. Okay, actually, we've become a level playing field in the used car business. Sure. There's not the big disparity. Oh, yeah. We could yeah. find out if that car was accidented. Yeah. Can you, uh, John, can you explain mm. that 13%, the HST? Yeah, it's, that, it's, just so people understand. The easiest way to explain that, too, is if you're buying a car that's $20,000, mm -hmm. your car is worth $10,000 on trade just for simple numbers. Now you're only paying uh, HST on the difference, which is the $10,000. Okay. The easiest numbers. I go over that five times, and they still look at me like <coughs> there's a head growing out of my shoulder or something. But mm -hmm. it's really easy. Just pay the tax. We're not used to getting tax breaks on things. Yeah, so. and it's 13%. The more your trade's worth, it's a fair you amount of money. Up. Yeah. So it's something to consider because if you're buying privately, you don't get that break. Not at all. On it, a new vehicle. You don't get that. You don't have the opportunity. We spoke earlier about financing the vehicle. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. You can't buy an extended warranty, right? And then uh, you don't liability. have liability. Liability, the protection from a dealer through obviously OMVIC and UCDA, very important. Look so for got, those stickers. You've yeah. got some safety stuff behind you. Someone's not going to pull your car in the middle of the night and take it. No. Doesn't have a, if it's got a, something that's secret, like a mechanic's lane or something that shows up, the dealer, you can go back at them on that, which is very important. I've seen that too before. That's very, very important. And I think too, we, um, we tend to, we think that a safety certificate is some kind of warranty and George says this a thousand times it's been safety it doesn't mean anything it means more than it did before July when they upped it but it still it means, doesn't mean it much. means the paper is good for 36 days to transfer your paperwork that's, that's it. it yeah a lot because of people think the it's, standard, it's the easiest way of putting it the standards are 
minimum, even with the revised standards. Yeah. The real proof of the pudding is bring it to a technician that's certified that you can trust, and he or she will tell you what shape that car is in. And that's yeah. got to be worth 100 bucks. They're not looking for a headache to adopt. No, they want to give it a real old-fashioned old fitness test. The Lemonade Car Show brought to you by Omvic, Ontario's motor vehicle sales regulator, returns after this short break. When we come back, we'll be taking your calls, 888-764-3778. Thank you.